What's cracking, everybody? My name's Scott, and we are back with some more Seattle Kraken news. And for once, it's not all good news. Now that I think about it, it's been a while since I've said my name on here, but it is my Twitter handle, so I guess it's not really hidden. Also, if you do find yourself enjoying this video at any point and you like to do that kind of thing, the subscribe button could probably help you out. Over the last week or so, there actually have been a few different notable pieces of news revolving around the Seattle Kraken. Most recently, the team shared its exciting news that in the last couple of days, not only did construction crews remove the last remaining temporary supports from the roof, but they also put up the last steel beam for the construction of the building. Now, obviously the arena is still far from being done, but this is definitely a significant milestone, especially considering everything that's gone on since they started this project, especially in the last year. Not to mention the complexity of the project already, even if everything had gone according to plan. Either way though, it does prove that they are well on track in order to have this building done by the start of next season when the Kraken do take the ice. And we also heard that when it does come to that first season, well, the season tickets are now sold out. Which does mean, unfortunately, that if you were on the list and haven't selected season tickets to this point, then you probably won't be getting them for the first season. However, the team did also say that they will be calling everybody on the list and potentially offering some game packages and different other options to get them in the building. And don't worry, even if you weren't on the list at all, or if you were one of the people farther down on the list, the Kraken did set aside a few sections in the upper bowl for just general admission in every game, so there still definitely will be ways to get in the building outside of buying tickets secondhand, which still will definitely be an option. And while we're on the subject, I did get a question about what that whole season ticket selection process looked like. Unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of details because one, it was a couple of months ago now that I selected my season tickets. And also, I wasn't actually the primary email on the group that I was buying them with. So again, not a whole lot of details, but basically the gist of how it worked was that everybody on that list who did end up getting season tickets at some point either got a call or an email which would set up your appointment time that you would actually select the season tickets. And then in that same email, they also gave you a link to a portal where you could go and view different seats, see the different sections, how much they cost, which different packages they had lined up, which would either be full season or half season type of tickets. And then also one pretty cool feature that that portal also had was when you did select a section that you thought you might wanna be in, you can see which seats would be available, obviously. And then once you picked a couple of seats that you thought might be the ones you were gonna go for, it actually gave you a rendering of what the view from those seats will eventually look like once you're actually in them. When it came to whether or not you wanted a full season ticket or just a half season ticket, most of the sections and seats were already kind of pre-divvied up. So you didn't necessarily have full flexibility when it came to that. So for example, if there was a seat you knew you wanted, it might just be that that seat was already set aside to be half season tickets or full season tickets, regardless of what your preference actually was. In our case, we ended up in the upper deck with half season tickets, which originally going in, we were looking for full season, but honestly, especially with everything that's gone on in this last year, half season financially actually ended up being a pretty good option. And we did get to choose which one of the two half season packages we ended up wanting. So we obviously went with the ones that will get us in the building for opening day. And then when it came to your turn to actually select the season tickets, which again was set out in that email giving you a specific time, you set up a video call with your season ticket representative, who also will be your representative for the entire duration of you having the season tickets. And then on the call, they obviously thank you for your support, ask you if you have any questions or need any help actually selecting tickets or deciding between a couple of different options. And then once you have a decision made, you just tell them which ones you want, they reserve them for you, and you set a payment plan and all that kind of stuff and so on and so forth ask any more questions you might have, and it's pretty much done. It really was a pretty straightforward, organized, and largely transparent process, which did make it very easy to go through. The only hard part was the, obviously the waiting to actually get your appointment and get those season tickets selected because, well, let's just say there was plenty of excitement. Oh, and there was actually one other pretty cool thing that did come with the season tickets in a one per slot, not one per seat type of manner. And that was the inaugural season stick that you can kind of see behind me there. I do have to say this thing is actually really cool. It's a wooden stick. It does say on there, you can kind of see inaugural season ticket. So um, yeah, it's a pretty awesome little thing that if you did get season tickets and you didn't get it, uh, all you have to do is go down to their team store and pick it up. Yeah, so that's a pretty cool thing that you'll see in my background from now on. I will say it's definitely the most expensive stick I'll ever end up buying, but it did come with free season tickets, so it's pretty well worth it. But the main story, and definitely to me, the biggest piece of news that came from the crack in this last week or so, was the announcement of who their play-by-play -play announcer will be on TV, as well as who will be hosting those games on local broadcast. Now this did come from the team as a two-for-one announcement, and I gotta say, 
it was pretty bittersweet. I will start with the sweet part of that bittersweet news, though, in the announcement that John Forsland will be the play-by-play -play announcer for the TV broadcasts for the Seattle Kraken. When it came to specifically this part of the news, I pretty much only saw positive reactions ranging anywhere from people being mildly excited to people being very excited about the news. Forsland has been a fan favorite pretty much everywhere he's gone, getting his start announcing NHL games on TV in 1995 for the Hartford Whalers. Hence, the jersey. He stayed for the franchise for the last couple of years they were in Hartford, and then moved with them down to Carolina as they became the Hurricanes in 1997. He remained the Hurricanes TV play-by-play -play guy through the last few games of now Seattle GM Ron Francis's playing career, and then was still there when Francis came back as the GM for that team, and ended up with that team all the way up until last summer when he was surprisingly not re-signed, and ended his career in Carolina. Since finishing his time with the Hurricanes, he did get a job with NBC helping to broadcast their national games, where he was during last season's playoffs and will remain throughout the course of this season. So if you do want an early taste of at least some of what to expect once he's here in Seattle, you can maybe catch him on one of those during the course of this year. And he did also say that while he does hope to stay on NBC's national team, he will prioritize cracking games over those, so we won't have to worry about losing him every now and then when NBC games come calling. So this does mean that Kraken fans can now look forward to hopefully for quite a while, listening to that tagline of, hey, hey, what do you say, finishing off Kraken wins. Unfortunately, though, as I did mention, that brings us to the piece of news that definitely has people feeling pretty bitter. And that is the fact that they announced that Forsland will be performing his play-by-play -play on Root Sports TV. Now, to be fair to the Kraken, pretty much everything they've done to this point I've considered to be pretty good news, and they've handled almost everything very well, which does mean that the team at least should be in pretty good hands and set up to be fairly successful once they do get on the ice. Unfortunately, the number of people that will be able to view that is now a little bit more under question. Now, at least as far as I can tell, the vast majority of the reaction to this part of the news has not gone over particularly well, and it's very easy to understand why. But before I get too much into why myself and many others are frustrated and even a bit angry about this particular piece of news, I do want to say that in the interest of fairness, one, this was not terribly unexpected, and two, if you do already have Root Sports TV, they do actually do a pretty good job of local broadcasting sports, so at least from a quality standpoint, the actual broadcasts will probably be pretty good. Unfortunately, however, if you don't have Root Sports TV, you're probably going to find it pretty challenging to end up watching any games at all. Now, the one little nugget of I suppose good news that was in this Root Sports announcement was the fact that they're going to have up to 75 games that they'll be broadcasting, which does mean that there could be seven games that you will be able to watch without having to pay the $65 to $85 a month for a cable subscription. And yes, that is what you would have to pay or maybe already are paying in order to have Root Sports. Now, part of the reason this was not a terribly surprising decision was because Root Sports and the Mariners have very strong ties that go all the way up to their ownership. And we do also know that while while it's probably in most part for the better, the Kraken have been in strong communication with the other pro teams in the city. So it was not terribly surprising that they would probably be talking to the Mariners about who their local broadcasting is, especially considering the Seahawks don't really do that. And while a decision like this might have made sense five to ten years ago, like example for when the Mariners made it, it just does not really work in today's day and age. And that's because Root Sports doesn't have any kind of streaming options. And so if you're like me or many other people in the Seattle area, largely of the younger generations who don't have cable and don't want to pay that ridiculous monthly fee for a bunch of channels you're never going to watch and one channel that you probably will, then you're probably shit out of luck when it comes to watching Root Sports and by extension now, The Kraken. Now, yes, obviously, again, for people like me who want to watch all of these games and will probably go to pretty much any links they need to in order to do so, there are some other not quite as legal options in order to be able to watch the games. Unfortunately, though, the Kraken won't really be able to feel the support of any of that like they would be able to if they had picked, you know, a partner that could do streaming, for example. Oh, and sorry, real quick, on a totally unrelated note, if you happen to be the owner of a VPN company and you want to expand your advertising horizons, I am available to maybe do some of that for you. Although, I guess now that I think about this decision more, it does make sense from a pop culture standpoint because Again, in pop culture, nothing really goes with Krakens quite like pirates. Not that I condone that at all. Unfortunately, though, the fact of the matter is that at least when it comes to the NHL, this is a new market for the game of hockey. And as a result, when it comes to growing their fan base over time, especially within this region, they should be looking pretty carefully at what it takes to get those casual or curious fans that don't really know a whole lot about the sport right now interested in the game and become diehard fans over time. And at least to me, it doesn't seem like the best way to do that is to immediately alienate the growing number of people, especially in this area, who are cutting the cord with cable. Because again, the fact of the matter is, 
while there are plenty of fans like me or probably you watching this video who will be willing to go the extra step in order to watch games, whether that's biting the bullet and buying cable or one of those other potential options, there are many, many fans who just aren't interested enough in order to go that much more out of their way in order to sit down and watch a game. But if they could just flick on a TV and watch it or flick on a stream more likely and watch it, then they probably would be willing to. Now again, in the interest of fairness and to calm it down just a little bit, the Vegas Golden Knights have also started their franchise with Root Sports. And well, it's pretty obvious that they haven't had too much issue growing interest in hockey in that area. But on the other side of things for Vegas, when they started in 2017, for one, streaming wasn't quite as big as it is now. Not to mention the fact that they were definitely also helped out by being the only team in town for the first few years, and also making a run to the Stanley Cup in their first season, both of which will definitely also help fan interest when it comes to learning a new sport in that area. And while even with a few other teams in town, if the Kraken were to make a run to the Stanley Cup in their first season, I don't think they'd have too much trouble growing a fan base that's also not very likely to happen. Now from the team's perspective and really the only response they've given to any backlash from this particular decision to this point is the fact that well Root Sports probably was the best decision they could make when it comes to specifically the TV side of things if you're again completely ignoring streaming. And that's because Root Sports really is pretty well tied into the sports community in the Northwest when it comes to broadcasting games on cable. So they already are very well to handle broadcasting sports in the region that the Kraken will be inheriting. So if let's just say optimistically thinking Root Sports were to actually listen to the fans and move into the 21st century and adopt some sort of streaming option, then they would actually be set up pretty well to cater to this fan base, which really could look like any number of things, whether it's some sort of yearly fee or monthly fee for the Root Sports package, who really knows? But honestly, as long as you're not paying $60 or $85 a month in order to pay for a whole bunch of channels that aren't Root Sports just to get access to it, then that's probably something that people would be willing to look into. And I will also say this from a personal standpoint, I will be watching cracking games one way or another, but ever since I got rid of cable, even though I have been a lifelong Mariners fan, I have not watched nearly the number of Mariners games that I used to. And I do know that I'm certainly not alone in that. So if let's say the Kraken were to not get off to a particularly good start or go through a few years where they're just not all that competitive, like the Mariners have gone through for the last couple of decades, then that definitely is going to affect your fan base to have limited options to actually watch games, even including some of your more diehard fans. And by the way, if you do feel so called as to really let Root Sports know what you think about all this and maybe help them make the decision to, again, move into the future and adopt streaming, then you can call this number during business hours and let them know that kind of stuff. And well, it can't hurt. But I do want to end this episode of What's Kraken on a bit of a happier note, so I did save one last piece of news from the last week for the Kraken, and that is the fact that in the last week, the Kraken donated $100,000 to the University of Alaska Anchorage Hockey Program in hopes of potentially saving that program. With the school struggling financially over this last year, like a lot of people are, they brought up in August the option of potentially eliminating the hockey program as well as a couple of other sports programs in order to save a couple of million dollars. But they did offer the hockey program a chance to save itself if they can raise $3 million by February 15th. Unfortunately, according to the article that this was reported in, as of the Kraken's donation, they're only about a halfway to that goal, so I will put a link down in the description below if you do want to make a donation to hopefully get them there, but it might be a bit of a long shot at this point. Either way, though, it does show that the Kraken are very much interested in trying to do their part to expand hockey and even keep hockey alive in some cases in the Northwest region, and that does include Alaska. Finally, though, if you have made it to this point in the video, thank you very much for watching and getting through that rant about Root Sports. If you did like or enjoy this video at all, there are buttons for that kind of stuff down below. Otherwise, I would love your thoughts on any one of these pieces of news down in the comment section. Otherwise, stay safe out there and be good to each other. Peace.